What's up, everybody? Back home from the GIE. Enjoying a little sunset on my front porch. It is still mad dirty and gross on the inside of my house, but I do have kitchen cabinets. I'm pretty excited about that. Looks, looks beautiful in there right now, but I'm not going to show you guys quite yet. So, mentioned, just got back from the GIE. It was a big week. This is not going to be a video about that. I got some cool pictures and there were some great conversations and things like that. I will just start out by uh, just saying some thank yous to the people that were there. We had hundreds, many, many, many hundreds of people, and I don't know if it were thousand, but it, it could have been close, uh, come by and see us at the booth. Um, and throughout most of the time, uh, it, there was a, a pretty good gathering around it, and it, it was pretty neat. Um, but Alan joined us, the lawn care nut. Jake joined us, Jake the lawn kid. Matt Martin, the grass factor. Pete Denny, GCI Turf. Uh, Ryan Knorr, love you buddy. Had a lot of fun. Uh, grass Daddy. Um, we got to we got to all hang out and um, really bond. Uh, it was it was pretty cool. I think that was the first time that that had ever happened. Had some good dinners together. Uh, shared a lot of ideas back and forth and and created a camaraderie that was uh, I would say pretty unique. Really, it was it was pretty unique and it was very very fun. Um, so you know, thank you to my staff, Brad. Deidre, Mark, Mark, everybody in Georgia who was holding down the fort, Chad and Alicia, Donna, Joy, all you guys, just thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we had a, an, an incredible show. There you go. So that, that's all I'm going to talk about right now. Um, the GID updates are all going to be coming across those channels here over the next few days. It's going to be really cool because to see kind of everybody's perspective. But we're still on the soil series. Oh my gosh, soil series. So, um, 10 days ago, uh, when I was down in my crawl space, um, I showed everybody a cup of soil that I had that I'd pulled from my backyard uh, that day, that morning. And I brought it down there and I just had it. And I mentioned that I was gonna be sending that off for a sample. So, um, I got that back. Now, I don't know if anybody remembers this, uh, I'm sure, because I say it all the time. Uh, I don't, I did not apply nitrogen this year, uh, and it had very little last year, just a tiny little bit of 1801. Um, I would say over the course of the season, it had less than an eighth of a pound uh, for the entire year, not eighth of a pound per thousand uh, for the year. Um, so it's pretty much been running on microgreen and aerate. That's really all I did to it. So I got the samples back and I have them right here and I'm going to show a better picture than this. So I want to run through them and just kind of give you an idea of what's happening in my personal soil and I'll kind of go from left to left, left to right. Now in Park City on, on some of the hillsides there is kind of a lot of alkalinity that's pretty common. Um, my soil is at a 7.7. .7. I would like to get that lower. Um, now part of that, in thinking back about this, when I took the sample it was wet, it had been after some snows and some things like that, and that can kind of push some of that material free flow to float a little bit, it could have adjusted the pH just from that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's not a major concern, I'll test it again um, in the spring and start my baselines back over, but here's what's interesting. So. Organic matter. I remember I showed you this thing. I cleaned it. I made sure I was only sending soil. My organic matter in that soil is at 5.1. 5.1 is pretty fantastic. Um, that's giving me about 100 pounds of available in without doing anything. And I haven't put any on it. So that's kind of wild when you think about it that way. There's not any nitrogen going down and yet I'm creating this pool um, just because we're cycling nutrients properly. Um, Moving across, 78 parts per million of phosphorus. Again, I'm in surplus. That's uh, nearly 160 pounds of FOSS, available FOSS in that soil. Pretty significant, that's gonna last me forever. Probably never gonna have to put any phosphorus down. Uh, moving along, 
potassium, 543 parts per million. That is high. I mean, you get into the adequate range around 150 ppm. Um, you start to move into 200, 250, you're in wonderful range. And it starts to go into major surplus around 350, 400. So we're, we're, in, we're in really good shape on potassium. Calcium, uh, just shy of 4,000 ppm. Uh, magnesium at 400. So I'm running about actually a 9 to 1 ratio there. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see that maybe get a little bit tighter, but I'm okay with that right now. Uh, salt, still low. That's, that's in a um, 60 ppm range. You know, that's why I think that there was a little bit of a flush that from the moisture that kind of some of the salts might have come up out of the soil uh, in that range. Zinc, iron, manganese, copper, all in a good zone. I'm, I'm in the go zone on all my miners. No problem there. Now, some of cations on my soil, 24.8. That's going to be putting me into a loamy clay. Uh, great nutrient holding capacity. And, and I would really classify what I see up there as more, more loam uh, really than anything else, but the organic matter is pretty high and when I did let it dry out it you know it, it came together pretty pretty tight but you know so it's it's bridging into that more clay but loamy clay and just with all the organic matter it's giving it some space um, my saturations I'm at 79% on Cal 14 on mag 1 on salt 6 on K so as I mentioned the K is pretty high and here's what I'm going to do to get this where I want it. Now, next year, when I come out of the season, I am going to be applying some elemental sulfur. I'm gonna be doing that early on, and it's going to be degrading throughout the course of the year. It's going to take some time for that to break down. And I'm totally good with that. Um, I will probably put down around 15 pounds per thousand. It's gonna put, you know, I only need a bag back there. It's not gonna be very much. And then throughout the year, I'm going to continue the run of my 002, only doing 002. And um, I don't really need to put the air raid out. Um, I think maybe next year I'll just switch it and do 002 and dethatch. And, um, you know, we'll start the season out nice and strong with those two materials and just let it be green and healthy. Now, I wanted to show that. Um, because for me in this house, the one that I'm currently remodeling, I've been in it for three years and I've been uh, very lean with the nutrition on that grass. And it's the only grass that I have here. It's where the kids play, it's where the dogs play. It's, it's beautiful, I like to keep it green. I wait a long time before I water it. The roots run super, super deep. And um, it's a very low maintenance lawn. It still is not getting any weed killer. There's no broadleafs in it anywhere. It is thick and tight and not really a problem. The biggest issue that I had was the rabbit issue that you guys saw if you go back to March or April, maybe April, May when I did the rabbit video um, about getting rid of those guys because they had caused a significant amount of damage early in the year. So uh, they stayed off of it for quite a while and came back this fall. So, you know, I probably got a good three months out of it without really seeing much issue. And then they, they came back as winter's coming. And as the sun is setting behind me, I'm going to turn in front of me. As soon as the sun goes down, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you uh, what my mountains look like in front of my house so that you guys kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So, <clears throat> we've gone through nitrogen. Uh, we've gone through CEC, we've gone through creating the topsoil. Um, I think something that could be talked about right now is phosphorus. And uh, there's a couple of people out there who I know are going to comment about this and you know who you are. Um, because, again, my soil, surplus. There's no need for any phosphorus. Phosphorus is still readily put down here. Uh, starter fertilizers with high FOSS, like 24%, um, are still being put down. There's a lot of people that still use just triple 16 and things like that around here. It's just 
no real reason. Um, and we don't need it, you know. Uh, we, there, there's not a phosphorus deficiency here. And this was a hillside, okay, just a hillside with sagebrush and that crappy stone that you saw underneath. That's all this place is. Now, just out in front of me, across in my view, there's a beautiful valley that's all wetlands and preserve, and, and it's gorgeous. And that soil in there is very peaty, a lot, a lot of peat material, uh, very organic, very wet, and, um, you know, very fertile as you kind of move up away from the low drainage points there is some agriculture on the other side of the preserve where they grow hay and um, and it's quite nice so the phosphorus deal has been an issue for a while in a lot of marketplaces minnesota um, any a lot more and more coastal areas florida where actually a considerable amount of phosphorus is is pulled from the ground for fertilizer um, it was taken out of soaps, detergents, and things like that years and years and years ago because of the contaminants in rivers and waterways. So, is phosphorus really that bad? N no, not necessarily. You know, if it's being put out right and, it, and it's being applied when it needs to be applied, uh, it's not. But where we run into issues are, are things like this. If I was just an average person, if I was an average person and I had this lawn that's up here, and I was just putting down average available material, then most of everything I put down is going to end up washing from my back of my hill down into this beautiful um, wetlands area. There, there's no doubt about it because the soil is going to be to a point where it can't take on anymore. And by the time that it dries out because there's too much in there, it's going to be very, very bad. And, and this is where phosphorus started to become an issue. So, there are areas where it is on, on, on principle, it's been banned unless you have a soil test that proves it needed, that's fine. What we have shown for the last 15 years is, uh, you know, growing in seed and um, doing agricultural studies and top, you know, overseeding, sli slice seeding, you name it. We've never applied FOSS in those times. Even in low FOSS areas, there was no real reason to because the main thing that a seed needs to germinate is some water. Once it starts to enzymatically digest that seed casing, you get, you get growth. Now, you can have stunted growth if there's not enough nutrient there, um, and that's kind of where people start to say, well, you have to load it up. You have to have a ton of FOSS, and you have to have a ton of this and a ton of that. Well, you know my rules now at this point. We want to stick to this sort of minimums. There's no reason to apply something if there's more than enough available. So knowing where your baseline is and then building your plan upon that are what's going to make the biggest difference. If you've got highly compacted soil, there's really nothing that's going to get in there until you start to correct this CalMag balance that are, that's binding things up and you know, moving some pore space open and driving some roots down. So a lot of these minerals that are being applied or these nutrients that are being applied have the ability to wash, have the ability to push off. And that's where we start to run into issues. So as far as phosphorus is concerned, it's in everything. Anything that's living has phos in it. That means the more that you encourage growth, the more potential for phosphorus you can have in your soil. That means that every microbe, fungi, worm, uh, any and all of the bacteria, the algae, all of these, the mycelium, you name it, all of this stuff that's in there has phosphorus in it because it's a part of life. It's a building block of life just as much as carbon is. So you nurture the soil, you can create a pool of phosphorus just as if you were feeding it to everything. And that's where I think a lot of people miss, is going back to what I've talked about a number of times. You're going to hear me say this a lot, like because I just want to just drive this home to everybody. Your lawn is not a crop. You are not doing removal to it. You are recycling what you put down on it. You do not need to treat it like a crop. That means that your phosphorus loss is non-existent. You can recycle and recycle. Now, FOSS can get bound up. There's available and there's unavailable and it's it's all there. You know, there's there's ways to measure those different categories just like nitrogen. There's available nitrogen and there's unavailable and there's stuff in the soil that you can you can read and have tests done on it. And sometimes you have to hit it with some heavy acids to flush it back up. 
and that can happen so there's there's these nutrients that can get locked at certain pH ranges and we can do things to those via nutrient feeding to release it back up into the plant so the, my pH being kind of on the high side my phosphorus is all on the high side you know I'm seeing this I'm gonna start adding sulfur to that I pretty certain I'm going to see my phosphor level continue to rise it's actually going to go up because I'm going to untie more as I drive down that pH so Again, thinking about the soil, you have 100% of something, you can't have more than 100%. You, it just doesn't work that way. So, I, you know, I've said this to some people and, and they don't, you know, just to try to get a good illustration, it's as if you're at the gas pump and your gas tank holds 20 gallons. You're not going to go further by pumping 25 gallons of gas. It's just going to go on the floor. It's going to run out. So, think about that in your applications. Good to know your starting point. If you really want to get into the science, that you know, if you wanted to just say, I want something simple, I don't want to really have to think about any of these things. You know, who cares if stuff is getting flushed down? You don't have to think like that. This is just the way I think as a sort of an environmental responsibility with my company and with my products. I want people thinking that way. I want them thinking about what's downstream because everyone is downstream. So just kind of take those things into consideration when you're looking at nutrient loads, when you're looking at bags of fertilizer. If you really don't know what you're doing, it's best to get help and it's best to ask and, and go to professionals. And there's a lot of them really with easy access now that are pointing cameras at themselves every day to talk about this stuff. So, uh, you know, there's a huge pool and you guys can reach out to me at any time and I'd be more than happy to walk you through this stuff. I love, you know, we can do phone calls and, and things of that nature and, and work through the nutrients that way. So this was kind of a hodgepodge walking you through my soil test plus a little bit about phosphorus. Um, but I just want everybody to get these concepts here of we don't want to apply too much of something. We're building that organic matter. We're driving those roots down. We're recycling that top growth. We're keeping everything in place. We're really giving the soil a chance to truly thrive. There you go. Questions, comments, you know where to get me. Everybody should have my email address by now. Answers at Um I love to talk about this stuff. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to be starting to slip in some information here coming up. Um, I had a lot of outreach, and I'm putting this at the end of the video because there's not everybody is going to make it to the end, so it'll just kind of leak out. In February, roughly the third week of February, I am going to hold another Loncology Summit. Um, I am going to open that up. I will be sending out information about that so that you can come and take a look. Now, this has generally been for the professionals, for customers of my company, um, but I am planning on making it a little bit longer this year, probably four days, and giving at least one whole day to you guys that are out there uh, DIY um, and bringing in some special, special guests and speakers to be a part of that. So, uh, you're going to have to stay tuned a little bit. I know, cliffhanger, woo! Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions about that. I'll start kind of giving details here and there, but I'll, I'll get you guys an official on it as soon as I possibly can. So thank you all. I hope to see you all real soon. Again, thank you to everybody that made the GIE just fantastic. And, and for everybody who, you know, takes the time to watch these videos and, and listen to this guy talk, I do, I do really appreciate you. And, and thank you for believing in, in the business and the products and me. I, I, it's, it's very remarkable. So I'll see you guys. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Oh, I promised something. See, I almost got away with it. I don't know if you guys can see that over there. But yep, that's snow. Snow on the mountains. And the big beautiful field beyond it. Yeah, it's happening. Bye.